Hello everyone, welcome to MathWorld. This video is to discuss Cambridge International AS and A level Mathematics Paper 6, which is the probability and statistics 1 for October November 2019 and the code is 9709-63. Nine so let's move on to question number one. Okay, so for question number one, there are 300 students at a music college. All students can play exactly one of the guitar, the piano, or the flute. The numbers of male and female students that play each of the instruments are given in the following table. So this is a table. Right, first part, find the probability that a randomly chosen student at a college is a male who does not play the piano. Okay, so now. Probability is represented by P. Let's say male means M and does not play piano. So piano bar. Okay, so from here, basically, you can just refer to the table. So female students, oh sorry, male students means that you refer to these three numbers. But then mention that does not play piano. So we exclude this 40. Right, that means the probability is basically PA equals to NA over NS. Right, so the NA now will be 78 plus 42. So my working is 78 plus 42 divided by total of 300 students. Therefore, this is going to be 120 over 300 and this can be simplified into 2 over 5. So that is the probability for first part. Now, part two, determine whether the events, a randomly chosen student is a male and a randomly chosen student does not play the piano are independent, justifying your answer. Okay, so now let's say for example, you need to prove that A and B are independent events. That means you are proving PA intersect B equals to PA times PB. Okay? Or probably you can prove PA slash B. This is a conditional probability. Equals to PB or PB slash A equals to PB. Right? PB slash A equals to PA. Sorry. Right, so we have few ways to do it. So I will be using the intersection method. So now here, right, I will let my M be male. So PM, the M means male student. And then the does not play piano means piano bar. This means does not play piano student. doesn't play piano okay so now I need to calculate each probability PM male student so by referring to the table total male students will be this row alright so it will be 78 plus 40 plus 42 so means that now here I will get for 78 plus 40 plus 42 over 300. That is going to be 160 over 300. That is 8 over 15. Now I calculate the next probability that is those students not playing piano. Alright, so now if not playing piano, that means you have to calculate these two values. I mean, these four values. So here I will get, or probably instead of calculating these four values, you can just write 300 minus those playing piano. Okay? So it will be the same meaning. So I will be using 
the second method, which is 300 minus the total of 35 and 40. So then here it will be 300 minus total of 35 and 40. That will be the number of students who does not play piano. Then over 300, that is the total of students. This is going to be 225 over 300. And then you will be getting 3 over 4. Okay, then now to prove the intersection, now we need to find the inter to prove the independence events, now we need to calculate the intersection probability. And this one already found from part A. Okay, so I will just copy from part A. That is 2 over 5. Okay, now PM times P not piano. complement of piano that is 8 over 15 times 3 over 4 okay just times these two numbers these two probabilities and then from here I found that it's basically 2 over 5 so then it is same as our intersection probability right so here you just write it down it is equals to P of M intersects with complement of piano okay so here you just write since the intersection is same as the multiplication probability that means both events are independent okay so this is how we justify our answer Right, so done for this question. Now for, for question number two, how many different arrangements are there of the nine letters in the word corridors? Right, so now C-O-R-R-I-D-O-R-S. There are nine letters here, but out of nine letters, I will have three R. Okay, after that, I have two O's. Right, so here I got two O's and then I have another four others. Alright, others means that only appears once. So C, I, uh, D and S. Okay, so now since you need to arrange all nine letters, therefore number of arrangements will be using the factorial. So I will write 9 factorial, but out of 9 factorial, there are 3 R's. Therefore, 3 factorial, and then followed by 2 O. Okay, so if let's say you just write 9 factorial, you are arranging 9 different letters. So now since they are repeating, so you must divide by the repeating factorial. And you will be getting the answer as 30240. So done for the two first part. Now, second part, how many different arrangements are there of the nine letters in the word of corridors in which first letter is D and the last letter is R or O? Okay, so now here, I will write down the arrangements. The first one is D, last one is R, or the first one is D, the last one is O. Okay, so now for your information, initially we have nine letters. Right, just now we have nine letters, we have three R and two O. Right, there are four others. Now, when you have these two conditions, we know that out of nine letters, you already fix the first and last, means that you have to arrange another seven letters in the middle. So, out of these seven letters, initially we have three R. Right, so now you have fixed one R at the back. That means we still have two R's and followed by, and also two O's. So for the second case, again, we have seven letters, but since the last one is O, okay, that means we have three R's. After that, one O and four others. 
okay so now what i need to do is since the first and last letters already fixed we just need to arrange for the remaining seven letters so therefore my number of arrangements it will be seven factorial for the first case divided by two factorials for the two factorial for the r and two factorial for the o okay now when you look at here it's mentioned o o is plus right so plus for the second condition whereby the first is d and the last letter is o means that now here i have to arrange seven letters but out of seven letters three are r okay and the rest just appears once then my working will be these two terms therefore you will be getting one two six zero plus eight four zero that will give you the answer of two one double zero okay now next question number three a sports team of seven people is to be chosen from six attackers five defenders and four midfielders the team must include at least three attackers at least two defenders and at least one midfielder now first part in how many different ways can the team of seven be chosen okay so for this case i will just draw a table all right so attackers here and then I have defenders and then I have midfielders so I have six right and then I have five for the second and then I have four for the midfielders and now to form seven remember we have to get minimum three minimum two and minimum one for the first for the last category now we need to get seven okay now the question says in how many different ways can the seven people be chosen so now i have to find out the combinations to get seven people that satisfies this condition right so at least three attackers i may start with three first So I will start with three. Then at least two defenders. So I start with two. So now three plus two is five. I need two for the midfielders to get seven. Okay, this is the first arrangement. I mean first combination. Now it can be three attackers. Since it's, it must be at least two defenders. So just now I consider two. Now I will consider probably three defenders right so three plus three is six six plus another one to meet this requirement minimum one midfielders now it could be so it cannot be three four so if you choose three four here then it will be zero for midfielders it does not satisfy minimum one all right so that's all for the three attackers combinations now i will choose four attackers then two defenders right so four plus two is six then you plus another one midfielders so that's all for the seven person the team of seven person so now i will number of selection or probably you can just write number of selections or number of ways it's up to you so number of selections will be the for the first case right out of six you choose three so six c three and five choose two and and it's times four you choose two person this is for first case okay second case right so six choose choose three so this is all right so we either choose three two two or three three one or four two one so all is plus right so here plus now six choose three for the attackers and five choose three for the defenders and four i choose one for midfielders okay now the third case is when 
I choose 421. Uh, so all third case. So third case, out of six, choose four. And then second, second category is five, I choose two. And the third category, four, I choose one. Okay, so this will be for first case, second case, and third case. Right? So then here, when you calculate, you will be getting 1,200 for the first case. Second case is 800, and last case is 600. Then from here, at last, I will be getting 2600. So this is the solution for first part. Okay, now the team of seven is to be, is to, sorry, the team of seven that is chosen travels to a match in two cars. A group of four travel in a car and a group of three in another car. Second part, in how many ways can the team of seven be divided into a group of four and a group of three? Okay, that means now there are seven person. First car will be four person. Second car is three person. So this is number of ways. Right, that means initially seven person. For the first car, I need to choose seven, uh, four from seven person. That is seven. C4. So once you have chosen four person, definitely left another three person. So this three person will go to the other car. So that means you can just write times three C3. Or probably three, three, three C3 is just one. Okay, no choice already. The other, the remaining three person must be in another car. So you can just write in this form or probably you can just write seven C4. That's it. Right? Then you will be getting 35. Okay, now for question number four, the heights of students at the Minland College are normally distributed with mean 148 centimeters and standard deviation 8 centimeters. This will be the heights of the students. Now, first part, the probability that a Minland student chosen at random has a height less than h centimeter is 0 0.67. Find the h. So now I will let my x be the height of the students and it is normally distributed with mean 148, standard deviation 8. So it will be 8 squared because our general, general formula is x is normally distributed with mean mu variance sigma squared. Okay, so now you need to calculate probability or not to calculate probability. The probability is given 0.67. So P, x, the height, less than h so less than h that is 0 0.67 in the question All right so now whenever you need to calculate the probability of normal distribution we need to standardize it so the standardized formula is the standardized normal random variable formula is z equals to x minus mu over sigma so therefore now your mu is basically 148 when you compare Okay, so mu is 148, x squared is sigma squared. So now I will be getting PZ. So you standardize it now. H minus mu. Mu is 148. Over sigma is 8. Equals to 0 0.67. Okay, then from here, once you have standardized, the next step is sketch the graph bell shape curve, middle value is 0 because it's symmetrical at 0. And then the property, the H value, okay, this line, we do not know where is it. So now for information, whenever less than, means that the region is from the line towards left side. So for your information, from 0 towards left side, this probability is 0 0.5 because we know that it is half of the graph, okay, here, All right? But then, obviously now, the line, okay, this line, okay, with greater probability and it is less than, that means the line should be on the right side. So it will be H minus 148 over 8. And then from this line to the left hand side, that is 0 0.67. Because when the Z less than 0, property is already 0 0.5. 
So when this property is greater than 0.5, therefore it will be on the right side of 0 because you are given less than. Okay, now when you look at this graph, obviously this whole value h minus 148 over 8 is positive, right? And then 0 0.67 is less, I mean, it's is a region towards the left hand side. Therefore, this region is same as the region on the graph, right? Which is in the table. Then you can just direct read from the table. So now from table, the normal table, PZ less than 0 0.44 will be 0 0.67. Okay, so this one you can just read the table. And now, once you get this, we can just compare with the previous probability. So everything is the same except this value equals to 0 0.44. So from here, I will just write H minus 148 over 8 equals to 0 0.44. Okay, then now to get the H, the 8 will be moved up. And then... After you move up, this negative 148 will be moved to the other side. So which means my H is basically H times 0 0.44, then plus 148. Then here is going to be 152.52. And we round up to three significant figures. That is 152. So that is your H. Okay, now let's move on to question or oh, next part. Now, 120 mainland students are chosen at random. First, uh, second part, find the number of these students that would be expected to have a height within half a standard deviation of the mean. Okay, now, before you get the number of students, you must find out what is the probability first. Okay, so now I will have to find out what is the probability that the height is within half a standard deviation of the mean. Okay, what does it mean by that? Let's say, for example, this is the mean. Half standard half a standard deviation. Half a standard deviation means half sigma. Right, half sigma. Because of within, that means it will be from the left side and from the right side. All right. That means here, the width is half sigma from the mean. So now, when, when you look at this lower value, that means you have to use mu minus half sigma. That is the value of the first, the, up, uh, the lower limit. Then the upper limits of the interval, it will be mu plus half sigma. And now you need to find out what is the probability that the x is in between these two values. Okay, that's the meaning of this. We didn't have a standard division of the mean. Okay, so now I will rewrite my x distribution, which is same as just now. The mean is 148, variance is 8 squared. So here I will write 148, then 8 squared. And now we need to calculate probability that x between mu minus half sigma and mu plus half sigma. So I remain this as mu and sigma first. I don't want to replace the value. So mu and uh, mu plus half sigma. And then from here, I will standardize it. Remember, when you standardize, basically it is z equals to x minus mu over sigma. This will be your x. So now I will minus mu and over sigma first. Okay, even though we know these two values, but I will just express in mu and sigma. So this is your original x you minus mu over sigma and the x will be changed to z once you standardize it then the upper limit mu plus half sigma then minus mu over sigma okay it's like this all right so from here when you open the bracket basically the mu minus mu will be zero okay for both also same and then the half sigma, negative half sigma and sigma, the sigma will be cancelled off for both terms. Then basically, okay, you are solving negative 0 0.5 until positive 0 0.5. That is what you are counting. Now, 
when you need to count this probability again I sketch a graph because we have sound we have found the z middle value is zero for the graph then now mark these two points these two lines I would say two lines so the region is these two parts okay now to get this, because we know that the graph is symmetrical as origin, which means this region, the region from 0 to negative 0 0.5, is basically same as 0 to 0 0.5. So therefore, I can just flip the left hand side to the right side. That means it will be double of the orange region. Okay, so now I will be writing this is equal to double of probability between 0 and 0 0.5 that is the right hand side the orange color so now to get the region for the orange color i would say that is the probability of z less than 0 0.5 minus probability of z less than 0. Point, uh, less than 0 okay then from here i will just write double of p z less than 0.5 minus B, Z less than 0. Okay, so then when you refer to the table, the first prob probability is basically 0 0.6915. And then the second probability obviously is 0 0.5 because it is half of the graph. Then at last, you will be getting 0 0.383. Now, this is the probability. But then when you refer back to the question, we are not finding probability. Okay, we are not counting probability, but you are given out of 120 students, how many students will be satisfying this condition? Now, for your information, this 0 0.383 is the probability of one student that satisfies this height, right? So now, since there are 120 students here, so I will just write my number of my expected number of students. It will be 120 multiplied with 0 0.383. Okay, then you will be getting 45.98. And this value, because this we are solving students, number of students, so it cannot be in uh, decimal. I will just write this will be almost 46 students. Okay, so now for question number five. Last Saturday, 200 drivers entering a car park were asked the time in minutes that it had taken them to travel from home to the car park. The results are summarized. Okay, now you are given this cumulative, this cumulative frequency table. Now, first part on the grid, draw a cumulative frequency graph to illustrate the data. Now, since the community frequency is given, all the frequencies, community frequencies are given. But then when you look at the first class, okay, the class is T less equals to 10. This is the upper class boundary because of less equals to. Now, all the upper class boundaries are given, but the first one is with community frequency of 16. So we know that you see here 10, 20, 30, 50, and so on. This is the number of time, the amount of time in minutes they travel from home to car park. So I would say that my first class, right, because for uh, community frequency curve, we need to add a new class so that the community frequency starts with zero. So when here is zero, that means I would say my t is less equal to zero. All right. So then when you look at here, the community frequency should be the vertical axis. So it is from 0 until 200. So by looking at this, so I will let this, uh, okay, I will let this be 20, here 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, because our biggest cumulative frequency is 200. So now here, 180 and then 200. 
here you have the labor comedy frequency okay so now just labor draw a straight line using ruler Okay, then now for the time it is from 0 until 90. Okay, so now let's look at the x axis. I will say horizontal axis 0 to 90. So here, right, I will let this be 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. That means here's 90. 70, 50, 30, and 10. So this will be my time in minutes. Right. So now, first of all, T0, cumulative frequency is 0. So 0, 0. I get a point. Right. Now, the next is 10, 16. Okay, so 10, 16. So now look at the the vertical axis here. There are 20 units shared by 5 squares. That means each unit is 4. Alright, so now I need to mark 16. That means it will be 4 squares. Okay, now the next data is 20 and 50. So here 20. 50 means that it is 44, 48. That is in the middle. This is 50. After that, 3106. 3106. This is 100, 100, 4, and then add another 2. So it's in the middle. Followed by 50, 146. So 50, 1, 4, 1, 4, 4, 1, 4, 6 in the middle as well. After that, 70, 1, 7, 6. So 70. 70 is here. 1, 7, 6 will be 1 square down the, down from 180. Because 1 square means 4 units. If I, as I have counted over here. Now, at last, 90, 200. So, 90 and 200. Okay, so now, join all the, all the points. Make sure you get a smooth curve. Alright, so... Maybe this part is not very really accurate. Right, so let's say this is my graph. Okay, so now, first, second part. Use your graph to estimate the median. Okay, so for your information, total frequency is 200. Right, so median is half of 200 data. This TH means the position. That means that is the data with position of 100. So now, I will draw the line 100. This is 100. Okay, then I will draw down.
So I will say that it is uh, one. Okay, now ten squares. Look at here. Ten units shared by five squares. Each square two units. So I will say that this probably is twenty nine. All right. So I will write my median is basically twenty nine. Okay, now part three. For 80 of the drivers, the time taken was at least t minutes. Use your graph to estimate the value of t. Now, at least means minimum. Okay, minimum t minutes for 80 drivers. So look at here. Minimum t minutes means the t minutes are counted from, I mean, the 80. I mean, okay. If let's say you consider 80 from the bottom, right? At least T minutes means that you will have, uh, how to say, the time taken was at least T minutes. So if at least T minutes, right? So if you are taking 80 over here, the time here means less than T minutes. 80 drivers less than 10 minutes but because of the word here 80 drivers taking taken at least 10 minutes that means this 80 is the upper 80 not the bottom 80 right so the upper 80 drivers means that you have to count from 200 okay that means right this is not the correct working then you have total of 200 80 from 200 the upper to upper 80 that means that is going to be 200 minus 80 which is 120 so now you need to look for 120 driver okay right so now 120 that is here Right, then you just draw the line, use the dotted line, now it is over here, that means I would say that it would be uh, about 35 based on my drawing okay so here let me redraw the graph it's not very accurate my graph your graph should be in this shape okay so Right. Okay, so you just try to sketch a smooth graph. Okay, so from here, if let's say I use this, then you will be getting this result. So it all depends on your drawing. So make sure. Right. So make sure your drawing is smooth. Okay, even though my graph is also not very smooth. So from here, right, so I will be getting 36 because each square is 
two units. Right here is 30. So I will be getting 36. So that means my T is 36. Okay. So that's all for the part 3. Now, part 4. Calculate an estimate of the mean time taken by all 200 drivers to travel to the park. So for the mean, we need to calculate the midpoints and also frequency. Alright, so now I will rewrite the table. So my T, then my frequency, and then my midpoints. Now, for your information, when you look at the first graph, uh, first class, it is T less equals to 10. This less equals to 10, I would say that it is same as 0 to 10. Okay, then here is same as 10 to 20. Or I would say that this is 0 to 10. So instead of writing in interval, I will change it to 0 to 10. Okay, then this 10 to 20 means 10 dash 20 is the same right so I will write down the classes first before I get the midpoints so 0 to 10 for the first first class then 10 to 20 after that you have 20 to 30 because the previous stop at 20 so the next one will be 20 to 30 30 to 50 Then 50 to 70, then after that 90. Okay, now for the small f frequency. So at first 16, then the next one you just minus 50 minus 16, 106 minus 50 and so on. Okay, this will be the frequency. So when you minus all, I will be getting all these values. So that will be 16, 34, 56, 40, 30, and 24. Now, with all the classes here, we need to get the midpoints. This M is midpoint. Now, how to get midpoint? Just plus together and divide by 2. Okay, so get the average. So then 0 plus 10 divided by 2 is 5. 10 plus 20 divided by 2 is 15. So then you will get 25, 40, 60, and 80. So now the mean is basically summation Fm over summation F. That is going to be 16 times 5 plus just times all this and plus all together. That will be my numerators. Okay, so here it will be 34 times 15 plus 56 times 25 plus 40 times 40 plus 30 times 60 then plus 24 times 80 over total of 200 because 200 drivers. Then from here you will be getting 7310 over 200. Then that is going to be 36.55. So you can leave your answer in this form or you round up to three significant figures. 36.6. 36 That's the mean calculation. Okay, now for question number six, a box contains three red balls and five white balls. One ball is chosen as random from the box and is not returned to the box. Right, and then the second ball is now chosen from the box. So basically, there are two boxes. No, sorry, there is only one box, three red and five white. Now you take one, after that, you take the second one, okay, and without replacement. Now, find the probability that both balls chosen are red. So, first is red, and second is red. So, initially, the red is 8, 3 over 8. So since never returned, that means it left 2 out of 7 red balls. That means this is going to be 6 over 56, 
that at last I'm getting 3 over 28. So done for the first part. Now part 2, show that the probability that the balls chosen are of different colors. So different colors means that it could be the first one is red, and then second, second is white, or all is plus, first one is white, and second is red. Okay, so first one is red means that 3 over 8. After you have taken one ball, the remaining will be 7 balls. And then the white color remains as 5. Now all, all is plus. The first one is white. White is 5 out of 8. So it will be 5 over 8. And the second ball, the second ball is red color. Red color initially 3. But now only has 7 balls in the box. So therefore, this is going to be... The total here will be... 30 over, <coughs> 30 over 56. That is same as 15 over 28. Okay, part 3. F given that the second ball is red, find the probability that the first ball is red. Okay, so the given that this is the additional information, which is the conditional probability. So, you need to calculate probability that the first ball is red, given that second ball is red. Okay, so use the formula PA slash B equals to PA intersects B over PB. So then from here, I will get this is basically PR1 intersect R2 over PR2. So R1 intersect R2 already counted in the first part, 3 over 28. Over PR2, this PR2, okay, now I have to calculate here. PR2 means probably the first one is R, second is R, or the first one is white, and second is red. So if the first one it's the same as numerator, which is 3 over 28. For the second one, white followed by red, that is 5 over 8 times 3 over 7. Okay, and this total is going to be 3 over 8. So I will just put it here. Okay, therefore, you will be getting 2 over 7. So that's the solution for part 3. Now, the random variable x denotes the number of red balls chosen. Fourth part, draw up the probability distribution table for x. So before this, I need to count px equals to 0. So x means number of red balls. px equals to 0 means both are white. Right, so both are white. So initially we have 5 white out of 8. So it will be 5 over 8. Then you times with 4 over 7. So I'll draw it here. 3 are 5 white. Then this is going to be 20 over 56. Now, you can calculate PS cross 1 or I will just write out PS cross 2 because you are taking 2 balls, right? So it can be both also red color so both red color we have counted just now that is uh, 5 over 56 which is 3 over 28 5 over 56 sorry uh, it is <coughs> 6 over 56 right And simplify into 3 over 28. So for the first one, I'll also simplify into over 28. That is 10 over 28. Then from here, I know that Px equals to 1 is basically 1 minus Px equals to 0 plus Px equals to 2. 
because you are taking two balls. It can be no red, one red, and two red. So then here it will be uh, 1 minus 10 over 28 plus 3 over 28. So it will be 15 over 28. So with this, I can just draw a table. This will be the x value and the corresponding probabilities. So it will be 0 for x, 1, and 2. So the probability of 0x is 10 over 28. Okay, the second one is 15 over 28. And px goes to 2 will be 3 over 28. So make sure the total probability is 1. But since I have used this formula, definitely this, uh, the total is 1. So if you counted separately, PS cross to 1, make sure these three properties sum to 1. Otherwise, your calculation is wrong. Okay, now, last part, part, four, part 5, find variance v, uh, variance x. So variance x is basically ex squared minus square of the ex. This is our formula. And then the ex itself it is summation x times b. So what to do is the x times probability. So times all together. I mean times this first. After that you plus. So the first one since it is 0 times 10 over 28. You can just ignore it because it will be 0. So I will just write 1 times 15 over 28 plus 2 times 3 over 28. And then this is going to be 21 over 28, which is also 3 over 4. Okay, and then for ex squared, that is summation x squared p. So which means you square the x. So now the 1 and 2 are my x. So I square it by referring to this expression. That at last you are getting 27 over 28. And now my variance x is 27 over 28 minus square of 3 over 4. And this is going to be 45 over 112. Okay, so that's all for the calculation of variance x. Now, next question, number seven. A competition is taking place between two choirs, the notes and the classics. There is a large audience for the competition. Given 30% of audience are notes supporters, 45% of the audience are classics supporters, the rest of the audience are not supporters of either of the choirs. So no one in audience, no one in the audience supports both. All right. Now first part, a random sample of six people is chosen is chosen from the audience. A find the probability that no more than two of the six people are not supporters. All right. Not more than two. Okay. So now our probability. This is basically the binomial distribution. So not supporters. That is 30%. Alright, so I will say probability is 0 by 3 because of 30%. Then the n is 6. So this is going to be binomial distributed with n is 6. And then probability of success is 0 by 3. Alright, so just for information, if x is binomial distributed with np, the probability of x equals to small x, which is ncx, px, q, and minus x. So now here I need to find out what is my q. Therefore, my q is 1 minus p. That is 1 minus 0 0.3, which is 0 0.7. Now, we need to calculate the probability of no more than 2. No more than 2 means it can be up to 2. So then, 
you can just calculate the Px start from 0. This is Px equals to 0 plus Px equals to 1 plus Px equals to 2. Then use this formula. Now Px equals to 0 means that no success. No success, on other words, it will be all 6 failures. So I will just write 0 0.7 to about 6. And then Px equals to 1 means out of 6 there is 1 failure, uh, one success. So it will be 6C1. And then only one success, so 0.3 power 1, and then the failure is 0 0.7, and there will be 5 failures. Or 62.3 power 2, then 0 0.7 power 4. Okay, then from here, I will calculate each of these. And then the calculator is giving me the exact values, so I will copy down. Or even though it's not exact, then you can just give your working curve to more decimal places first. Then now when I add up, I will be getting this figure. And now final answer, always three significant figures. So I look at the fourth one, which is three. That is less than five. That will I do, therefore, I will just ignore it. Then my final answer is 0 0.744. So that's the solution for A. Okay, now B, find the probability that none of the six people support either of the choirs. So now, look at the third point. The rest of the audience are not supporters of either one. That means now, I have to calculate the remaining probability, right? That is 1 minus total of 30% and 45%. So now my P will be 1 minus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3. Uh, 4, 5. That is going to be 0 0.25. This is uh, none of them support. This one is does not support, right? So means this P, this is P not support either one. I will write here P does not support either equals to 0 0.25 all right so now i will write my y is binomial i use y because this property is does not support either so just now the x is different so now the n is still 6 and then it is 0 0.25 now none of the 6 supports either means that Right, P, Y equals to 0 because none. Therefore, means that no success. Right, P, Y equals to 0. So that means, uh, wait. Okay, wait, wait. I, I should say, I should say this, this way. Now, you are considering 6%. Okay, 6%. None of them support. None of them supports means the probability of does not support is 0 0.25. Alright? So that means when you consider this, alright, I better to write this binomial distribution. Otherwise, it will be a bit complicated. Uh, it, it's a bit confusing. So now, none of the 6% support the choirs means that when you look at the 6%, all of them are not supporting both choirs. Okay, that means the probability is 0 0.25. So from here, I will say that the probability is basically 0 0.25 power 6 because it's like 0 0.25 times 0 0.25 for 6 percent. So therefore, your working is 1 over 4096. I leave it in fraction. So you can write 0 0.25 or probably you can write 1 over 4. It's up to you. Okay, so this is the working for B. Now, part 2. A random sample of 240 people is chosen from the audience. 
use a suitable approximation to find the probability that fewer than 50 do not support either. All right, just now from the previous part, does not support either means 0 0.25. And then now I will write here P is 0 0.25. Now your N is 240. So when you calculate N times P, that will be 240 times 0 0.25. That is going to be 60. Okay. And then the NPQ, that is your NP already counted, which is 60. So I will just replace the NP by 60. Then here 60. Now, your Q obviously is 1 minus 0 0.25. That is 0 0.75. So when you multiply, okay, so 60 times 0 0.75 is basically 45. Now, it's mentioned here, using suitable approximation, initially binomial. So I will write it down. X is binomial. Okay. Or oh, I better don't use X because X is for nodes supporters. Probably I use Y. So y is binomial distributed with n 240. The p is 0 0.25. Now you approximate it to w is to normally distributed, right? The mean is 60, variance is 45. Because the NPQ is a variance for the binomial distribution. Now, from here, you need to calculate less than 50. So p, y less than 50. But you have to remember... Okay, binomial is discrete. Random variable. The normal is continuous. Random variable. So from discrete, you approximate to continuous. That means you need to consider the uh, continuity correction factor, which means I draw the line. Okay, I mark 50 first. But since your y less than 50 means that it will accept 49, 48, and so on. Alright, so the ticks means the y values. But then according to the continuity correction factor, you can plus or minus 0.5 from the given y. That means when I plus, minus point, plus 0.5 from 50, that is 50.5. If I minus 0.5 from 50, that is 49.5. Okay, so now here I will write P, W, less than. So the, either I change the 50 to 49.5 or change to 50.5. So since this is less than, means now I have two choices. Either less than 49.5 or less than 50.5 to include the two ticks. So obviously I have to choose 49.5. If you choose less than 50.5, you will have extra 50. Okay, so here less than 49.5. And once you have converted it to W, look at the distribution. This is normally distributed, which means now you need to standardize it. So when I standardize, that becomes PZ less than 49.5 minus 60 over square root of 45. So this is going to be PZ less than Negative 1.565. Alright. So now here, sketch a graph. Symmetrical at 0. Draw the line negative 1.565. Because of less than means the region towards left side. Since it's less than, okay, the region is on the left side. Now what I need to do is I flip to the right side and the region is basically the orange region. So now I will write this probability is same as P Z more than 1.565. So in order to get the orange region, the probability of orange region, that is total properties 1 minus P Z less than 1.565. So my working becomes 1 minus P Z less than. 1.565. And now you read the table. What is the probability of Z less than 1.565? And you will be getting 0 0.49412.
Okay, so at last, the answer is 0 0.0588. So that's the solution of this question. Right, so with this question, I have completed the paper and also comes to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy watching my video, please like this video and subscribe to the channel and also share this channel with your friends. Okay, if you would like to show support to this channel, you can just click the thanks button below the video. And stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Thank you. Bye.